So today we're going to be building a computer. That's something that we've been wanting to do for quite some time. We're going to be building a really, really small computer, micro ATX form factor in the a lovely Meshalicious, I think that's right, Meshalicious from SSUPD or SUSUPD. And we're going to be building into that case uh, because why not? Because it's I, I, something about really small cases that, that really interests me in that you've got to be super, super careful about cable management, really fussy about it in fact. And you've got to choose your parts really, really carefully because there's only a limited amount of things that you can put in it. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing in today's video, right after this. So without further ado, let's go through some of the parts we're putting in the Sasopd case or the Meshalicious, Meshalicious case. Oh my God, words are hard. So let's start on this side. We're putting in, uh, we're going AMD for this one. So we're going Ryzen 7 and we're going Ryzen 7 the 5800X. That's eight core, 16 thread CPU. And uh, you can see, hopefully you can see there, it boosts up to 4.7, although we might be able to get it higher than that. We'll see how it goes anyways. Uh, we'll do some thermal testing later and we'll see how far we can push this thing in the meshlicious case. All right, next we've got possibly the smallest motherboard I have ever worked with. The ROG, as you can see, I'm just going to read out what it says. The ROG Strix B550i Gaming. This is the mini ITX board that we're going to be putting in this. Obviously B550 and out of the box support for Ryzen 5000, which is what we're going to be putting in. So that is super great. It means we don't need to do a BIOS update to get it working. And uh, that will save us a bit of time when we're building. So obviously it supports PCIe Gen 4 as well. Uh, the GPU we're putting in there does support that, so that will help with that. Supports up to 64 gig of RAM. Uh, we're only putting 32 in, so there's room for upgrade later on down the line if they want. All right, so this is the 32 gig of DDR4 3600 in there. Thanks to Crucial for sending this one over. This is gonna be going in this machine, more than enough for what it's gonna be used for. Uh, yeah, so that's the RAM. Again, going to Crucial for this one, we're putting a one terabyte P5 Plus. This is PCIe Gen 4. So this will be PCIe Gen 4 times four speeds in this thing. So it should boot up in a matter of seconds. Now, because we're going with the Ryzen 5800X, this one doesn't come with a cooler. So we've had to reach out to Be Quiet, who kindly sent over the Silent Loop 2 now this build needs to be quiet and uh, we're not going for RGB here. So although it has a little bit of uh, orange accent because orange is be quiet color and just so happens to be ours too, they sent over this 240 Silent Loop 2. So that should keep our CPU nice and cool. Now without getting into the debate of should you wait to buy a GPU, should you just get one? Uh, we're going with the RTX 3070 on this one, non-TI, and we've gone with the two fan versions. So uh, nice and small, although this case will actually support up to a three fan, and I'll put um, the measurements later on in the video, but you'll be able to see that once we start building it. This is a small one, although the case looks, the box looks really big actually. Uh, so yeah, we're going with the 3070, and then they can upgrade later on if they want to play something a bit more beefy. We'll go for 4000 series or whatever. So to power all this stuff, we are going with, again, Be Quiet for this one, the Pure Power FM, or Pure Power 11 FM. It's a power supply that we have actually used uh, a couple of times before. So we know the reliability of these are at least pretty good. We've got two of these in use at the moment and we've had no issues. These are 80 plus gold. So you know that those, uh, the peak power usage kind of lines are gonna be kind of, you know, stable. So we're going with that. Thank you, Be Quiet, that's so awesome. And last but not least, what we're building all this stuff into is the Sasopdi Meshalicious. Now, I probably just killed the name, but the Meshalicious, or the Meshalicious, however you want to say that, this is it. So let's head on over to the case. Now, from first impressions, it doesn't look, I mean, it's, it's a Meshalicious, Mesh, oh my God, Meshalicious. <laughs> it's basically mesh on all sides, is what I'm trying to say. It's such a small case, I don't have, any way of measuring this, but if I can get the measurements, it can't be that hard. I'll put them up on the screen right now so you can see how small this thing is. It's just ridiculous. If we just move over to the backside, power supply goes down here, motherboard is gonna go here, graphics card is gonna go along here, 
Now with the graphics card, we've got two ways to mount this. We can mount it vertically or we can mount it horizontally. Uh, the other way, I just did it the wrong way around, but you get the impression <laughs> that I'm trying to make. Vertical, no, horizontal, <laughs> vertical. Right, so uh, because we've got quite a small graphics card going in here, we might just be able to do it that way around and have done with it, but it would be kind of cool to see how it goes down that way. Although we'll see once we get building how that works. But the first thing we need to do is figure out how the heck we open this case because I cannot see a screw anywhere and I'm confused. So we'll be right back. Uh, is there a manual? So while we're here, we might as well go through the box that comes with the Sysopti Meshalicious case. Uh, we've got, looks like rubber feet. If there's four of those, it's definitely feet. We've got a hard drive mounting bracket there. Uh, some rods. Oh, you're joking. It comes with a right angled. <laughs> the person that this computer's going to bought a cable because we weren't sure if it came with one. It actually comes with a right angled, I think that's display port, you know? No, that's HDMI. Okay, so it comes with a right angled HDMI lead as well, which is quite nice to see. Um, they've gone with DisplayPort. Uh, all the screws, you, know, you get some cable ties, which is pretty standard, and a manual, and that's what we're actually looking for. So let's see how we open this case. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so um, we found the manual. Looking at the instructions on this, it looks very well laid out and very, very well described. So anyone new to building, this is gonna be a challenge for anyone anyway, but anyone, if you're new to building, uh, I would say you. this is really good. It's really well thought out. It still doesn't help me find out how I remove the panels. <laughs> this is the one thing I can't see on here. Let's try the other side. Removing the panels is, is here, but it's not in English. Oh, great. So that is the only place where it says to remove the panels. Uh, okay, so apparently they just pull off. We just pull them off. Okay. Do you, does, do you think that says pull off? Just pull? I think that it just says pull off. So let's try it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? We just pull it off. <laughs> All right, so we figured out how to remove the panels, as you saw from the, the, the uh, very, very good uh, manual guide, whatever you want to call it. So basically, we just pull the panels off like that. Now, this kind of worries me a little bit because these are, are quite flimsy. I mean, you can see it kind of bending a little bit. Now, I wouldn't want to bend this because this isn't mine. I've got to be extra careful with it. Well, I mean, that was pretty easy, actually. So it just has these uh, metal, uh, what would you call these? Metal lugs, metal poles. Anyway, that is what seems to attach to it. So that now we know that, that's really easy. So we're gonna mount the 240 radiator to the front, I think, along here. Uh, although it will go up to a 360, I think. I think it's a 360 or a yeah, I think 360. Uh, anyway, we're putting a 240 in it, so that will cover most of that. There are gonna be no other exhaust fans, no other intake fans or anything like that. We're, we're solely relying on the Silent Loop 2, so hopefully that's gonna be enough. If not, then I might have to put another fan in it, but we'll see how that goes with the testing later on once it's all built. Oh my God, yeah, that comes off as well. It's literally an open chassis now. You can work from it from every single angle and it should make building this really, really simple. So graphics card's going to go either down that way or along that way, as we said earlier. Motherboard we're going to mount here, power supply down here. The only issue with this one, we're going full ATX, as you probably noticed earlier. There's going to be a tight fit with the full ATX power supply in there, but it should, should just about be enough room to get the cables that we need. There's very little cables gonna be connected to this anyway, just the motherboard, CPU, graphics card. That's about it. It's an NVMe drive, so there's no extra power cables required for a SATA drive or anything like that. Really, really simple build. And then hopefully there's still enough cable space for the tubes for the AIO cooler that's gonna go along the front here, because that is the only place you can mount it in this case. And uh, it's 
if you're gonna, I, I'm not sure yet whether we're gonna, it depends on how the fans are attached to it. They may not already be on it yet. Normally they're not attached to the cooler by default, but um, I'm not sure whether we're gonna suck in or blow out. We'll see how it goes. All right, so first thing we need to do, now we've opened the case, is uh, put the stuff on the motherboard. So let's have a look at how small and how ridiculously cute this thing is. I haven't looked at the box. I've, this is the first time I've opened it. So we're gonna look at this together. Here it is. It's literally the same size as my hand. That's how small an ITX motherboard is. It's incredibly crazy. It does have uh, active cooling. There is a fan underneath that as well. Uh, you've got the two DDR4 slots there. And you've got four SATA ports there. You've got uh, Gen 3 uh, USB 3 support there. So basically USB-C. Uh, Gen 3, is it Gen 3? I forget, it's so difficult now which, remembering which one is which. Basically USB-C, that's for USB-C, which this case does have, so that's really good. Your standard ATX 12 volt power connector there. Uh, it has a bunch of uh, fan headers, surprisingly a lot for a tiny little motherboard actually. That's obviously the connection for the fan that we've got there. RGB headers as well, but again, we're not gonna be focusing on uh, RGB on this build. And then obviously where the cooler is gonna go and the CPU of course. PCIe Gen 4 NVMe drive is gonna go underneath that. So that I think is where we're gonna start. And we're gonna put that in right now. But first, we need a screwdriver. One thing you need when you're building is definitely a screwdriver. And uh, normally you don't need too many different size heads, but I've got a selection of heads here to go on our electric screwdriver. Now, if you want to know where to get this, I don't actually know where it came from, so I can't tell you. But I'll put an equivalent link in the description down below so you can go and find your own electric screwdriver. It just makes things a little bit quicker when you're building and uh, even has a little light on it. All right, so now we've got the right head for the screwdriver. We're gonna go and undo this thing and uh, fit our... hard drive in. Uh, this is where you need uh, a screw tidy or a, a magnetic tray where you can put all this stuff. So I'll try and do it around that way so you can see. So we've got the thermal pad under there for our NVMe drive because believe it or not, they do actually get hot when they're accessed a lot. So uh, we will be using that, that's for sure. Now there's a, an age old debate about whether you remove the sticker before you put the thermal pad on, or you just put that on over the top with the sticker on it. What would you do? Let me know. I'm gonna leave it on because it's not my build, uh, but I would love to know what you think. What would you do if you were building? One thing I've also just noticed is there's actually already a screw in there, so we need to remove that one and then screw the hard drive down. This is probably the most fiddly, fiddliest, is that a word? The most awkward part of building is trying to get the screw in. Yes, we did it. Okay, so we're gonna mount this back on. Take the protective cover off the thermal pad. I must say the aesthetics of this board do look actually rather neat. I do like the color scheme on this. Now there doesn't seem to be any guides about getting this in the correct place. So you kind of just, looks like I kind of have to eyeball it where the screw hole is uh, to make sure you get it in the right place because uh, it's not as easy as it looks. Or you can use the screw. Put the screw in and then just kind of feel it. Yeah, it looks like it's in the right place. And then, uh, yeah, just screw it up, I guess. When I say screw it up, I don't mean screw the build up. I mean, I mean, screw the thingy. You know what I mean. There we go. All right, so really the only other thing that we can mount on the motherboard is actually the memory before we get it put in the case. Uh, so we're gonna mount the crucial ballistics gaming memory, non-RGB, as we mentioned earlier. And I'm trying not to break the case, but I'm not doing a very good job of it here. I've already broken it. Now the case looks a bit dirty. Uh, I don't quite know what hap what's happened there. But uh, I'm sure you the RAM inside is perfectly fine. Pristine. Look at that. Lovely black ballistics DDR4. Do you know what? I think I prefer the non-IGB ones to the RGB ones. Look how good they look. 
So whenever you're putting RAM in, you've probably heard it a thousand times before, open up the clips on the top or the bottom if it has the ones on the bottom. This particular motherboard doesn't have clips on the bottom, uh, only on the top. So we're gonna put in uh, the wrong way around, the correct way, and populate both slots. Push down one end, push down the other end, and let's do it again just to make sure it's got a positive lock. You can see the lock has gone up instead of down And that's it, that's basically all we can do on this. Now, oh, well, obviously we can put the CPU in, which we will do now, and uh, then we need to mount it. Let's just, before I do that, you can see the tiny little cooler in there. I mean, we could take this off, maybe I'll show you a bit later on, but uh, you can see a fan just about, if I angle it slightly, you just about see the fan in there on the back. Uh, oh, one thing I didn't go through was actually the ports on this particular motherboard. So you get HDMI, uh, display port, I think that's 1.4, uh, USB 3, all these are USB 3 ports. You actually get, I swear I saw two USB-C on this earlier. Oh yeah, there is. Uh, so USB-C there, uh, USB, yeah, USB-C, uh, Wi-Fi AX on this one. So really, really fast Wi-Fi. You've got an AX compatible router. Uh, 2.5 gig ethernet on here as well. And your standard kind of audio jacks on the back. Now these are a little bit more special in that they just light up. I don't know why, because once you've got I don't really get this. So they light up the color that, of the connection that needs to go in there. Surely making them not light up was cheaper or more cost effective than having a color around the outside. I don't know why that would be. But anyway, these light up apparently in the color of the connections that you need to plug into it. I guess it's pretty neat if you're into that. Um, I don't know why, but that's what they've done. I guess it looks pretty cool. And another USB-C port there, so you've got two. And actually you've got the capability on the front as well. So there'll actually be three USB-C ports on this micro, micro, on this mini ITX motherboard. Incredible, absolutely incredible. Now let's get the CPU in. As I said, you get literally nothing. You get cardboard in the box for this CPU and the CPU is literally on the right hand side. I mean, they could have saved a bit of packaging in this day and age where we're trying to save the planet and all that and made the boxes like 10 times smaller. <laughs> just just to put that in, a bit incredible. But um, yeah, there it is, the 5800X. All right, so mounting the CPU couldn't really be easier on this one. Lift the clip up there, the retaining bracket clip thing, whatever you want to call it. Open the clamshell for the CPU carefully. Now this is, you've got to be carefully, carefully, careful with this one because the pins are on the CPU. The new ones, when they come out, won't have pins on. So this will be even easier. Uh, but you need to be extra careful with the pins because they break and bend very easily. Put that in the correct way around. Now, does that look the correct way around to you? The answer is no. You need to line up the dot, which is barely visible actually, in the corner with the triangle on the socket, which is kind of just down there, the triangle there. So you need to line up the dot on the CPU with the triangle. So rotate that round and then basically just drop it in. Give it a little bit of a tap and then put the clip back down and that's it. CPU is installed. There's someone on the roof. There's a cat walking on the roof. Shush cat. All right, anyway, back to the video. Uh, so now we're gonna try and mount the, the um, no, the wrong way. Uh, now we're gonna try and mount the, we are going to mount, we're not gonna try and mount, we are going to mount the motherboard we've just populated. Uh, right, so now we've got the right side up, we can mount the motherboard into the meshalicious. It is the meshalicious, not the meshalicious. So um, let's just do a proof fit a minute just to see how this is gonna look. And so it comes with the standoffs already on the motherboard. So we can kind of get it in the right place. Now we need to put the back plate on. Now, a lot of motherboards come with these already built onto the motherboard itself. Uh, this one obviously does not. So you've got to make sure, it's kind of old school now, in that you need to mount this in before you put your motherboard in. Uh, so what this will do, uh, that way around, it will just make it look really nice and tidy and also gives you a description of what things are on the back. So yeah, Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi X, line in, line out, 
mic in for your audio jacks. So looking at this, it looks like the bottom port actually is USB Type-C audio. And I don't know if that means it's audio only. Oh, wow. Now, sometimes these are a little bit tricky to get in. This one's surprisingly easy and uh, really nicely padded on the other side. Got a nice padding there. So now we just need to uh, put the motherboard in. Four screws is all it takes. All right, so just for just so everyone can see, I'm going to try and do it at this angle. It's a little bit awkward for me because I kind of have to see that everything's lined up. But let's just see how this goes, shall we? <laughs> this should be fine. It's all going to be fine. What would be really, really nice is if these were separated out into individual bags or like um, like some manufacturers do. They, they actually give you a plastic container and they separate all the screws out into different containers so that you can find them easy. And I think that's a really, really cool thing. I get there's like there's money, extra money in that and they'd have to raise the price of the item. But for a first time builder that has no idea about what screw goes where, uh, I think that's a really cool thing. And I think everybody should do that. But that's just my personal opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think all manufacturers should put them in containers? Little plastic containers. I think they should. Okay, don't forget, don't over tighten the screws. So we've got this riser cable that comes with the meshlicious case. Now, because the graphics card goes on the opposite side of the motherboard, we, we have to use this riser cable that comes with the case actually. So I have to put that in. It's a little bit, I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit tight. And as you can see there, it's literally just popped out. So that's interesting. <laughs> it's really tight. Why did that pop out? So that seems to be in now. But if we lift that up so there's a bit more light, you can see here we've got this weirdness going on here. This is obviously power, power delivery, the small connections that you saw there. The rest of it is the, the video signal and the video, the data basically. This is just power delivery, which is why the cables look a little bit different. Um, I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure that this particular model of case uh, is the PCIe Gen 4 version. I know there's two, one doesn't have the PCIe Gen 4 cable, and one does. I'm hoping this does, but I think even if it isn't, I think for what they're going to be using it for, it's not really going to make that much difference anyway. All right, so the next bit we need to plug in, if you can see that, is the power LED, hard drive LED, and power switch. So uh, I've got to look in the manual because I'm not entirely sure where it goes on this board. So let's have a quick look at the manual. Number 16, so it looks like the system, they call it system panel header, so that will be, where's that? That's these, if you can see it. That's these ones here. So I've got to plug it into those. Maybe I should have plugged them in first. There we go. Right, that's the front panel I.O. connected. Okay, now I think we need to get the power supply in there. Now one thing I'm not entirely sure is full size power ATX power supply, whether I need to move the board back. It doesn't look like I do because it actually takes both, as I said earlier. And I think on one of them, you have to actually take this panel out here and then move the motherboard over to accommodate uh, a mini ITX power supply, which this will support as well. So I think as we're going ATX, we should be fine. One-handed, first time ever on our channel, one-handed build, as far as I can anyway. At least part of the build is gonna be one-handed. This might go terribly wrong. All that smells new, brand new. So as you can see there, we're only gonna plug in the ones we need. Now we do have to populate that one, uh, that one, that one. I think that one as well, so those four, but these ones we don't need to populate, uh, apart from the graphics card, we will need to populate one of those, I think. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna need to take this out, this bracket here for the mini ITX, so let's do that. bracket for the mini ITX power supply. We don't need that. All right, so I managed to get four screws in. I had to put the camera down for that, but as you can see, four screws are in and it's getting a bit heavy now. That power supply is not light. Now, 
I'm thinking possibly the cooler should go in next so that we can start Ah, no, no, before we do the cooler, we're going to make sure we get these plugged in first because I think once we get the cooler in there, we're going to lose access to be able to plug stuff into that. Okay, so we're at the stage where we're actually going to mount the uh, water cooler, the AIO cooler, uh, onto the CPU. I've had a little bit of a, uh, a think and a little play off camera on this one, and I, I wasn't quite sure. I tried to test fit it a little bit, uh, but it's extremely tight. I kind of knew it would be quite tight, but I didn't realize it would be this tight. Because it's new, these don't bend as flexible as I'd like, but I think I'm gonna have to bend them a fair amount. You'll see when we try and fit it anyways. Uh, but firstly, if we uh, move on over to the PC, so I think to get the best angle, if I'm having tubes going up, I need to remove this. All this stuff just basically unscrews. So this, this can be unscrewed, this can be unscrewed, and that should give me access to uh, mount the cooler on the front and then have the tubes going maybe down that way. I'm not entirely sure if that's the route I'm gonna take yet. And to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure if I'm having the tubes go up. We'll see how it goes and how I can bend those tubes to make it fit. But yeah, having a full ATX power supply here, if I move that out of the way, uh, which we already knew was gonna be really tight. And you can probably see I've taken the ATX power supply out, uh, power supply, the cable, 12 volt, uh, cable out from the motherboard and uh, just to give us a bit more clearance here but we're really going to have to bend these cables kind of out of the way to give us plenty of room. Now luckily this case uh, takes up to I think I said 360 but I think it's actually 280 it will take up to a 280 radiator so these little brackets here can actually move up and down to accommodate the different types of uh, radiator and allow you to fit them so if you well you can obviously see that moving up and down hopefully so that allow, allows us to position it and then get it up to where we want it. Hey, also, it comes with a refill bottle from, obviously from Be Quiet, because that's where the cooler comes from. So you can top up your, your coolant. It actually has a port, so you can top it up, which is uh, really cool. Everyone else should take a leaf out of this that does AIO coolers. Because I want the name to, to show that way, we've got to change these brackets as well, because they've got to come off. It has its own mounting system. Uh, and so I want it to go that way, which only gives me a couple of choices about where the cable can go. Now I'm really going to have to bend it to get it. I mean, that would work, actually. That might work. I think that might work. It's going to have to really bend that cable round to make it fit. I think that would work. I think that's the route we're going to go. So actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw the, the fans on now. And I think that's the route I'm going to go. So it's going to kind of really, because these are new cables, new, uh, it's a new cooler, obviously. It's going to have to really bend if i can just kind of show how it's going to go it's going to kind of go really tight like that like like really tight probably like that in the case so that's what we've got to try and do but in the case comment down below if you think we can actually accomplish that i don't know anyway we need to get the fans on so what i'm thinking is have the fans suck air in or blow air out i mean we can always swap them around it might be a bit of a faff to take the fans off and do it later on, but what do you think? What do you think we should do? I'm talking to you. Hmm? What do you think we should do? Oh. Uh. Fans blowing air out through the radiator to cool it down or sucking air in. What do you, what do you think we should do? I don't get what you mean. What? Well, fans blow a certain way, don't they? So yeah. uh, if we can show you, there's a little arrow on here on the Be Quiet fans. Uh, so yeah, I didn't mention what these are. These are the Silent Wings 3 fans. And Be Quiet are known for quiet fans, so hopefully these are no exception. So there's a little arrow, I don't know if the camera can pick this up, that shows the direction of the fan travel, which is up. So the blade is gonna spin that direction. And then the air is gonna be pushed through in that direction. You can just about see it, it's very faint. You can just about see the direction of the arrow, which is that way. So I'm kind of thinking, I'm kind of thinking it should blow out to suck any hot air that's going to be inside the case, out of the case. Let's try that. It does mean doing that though, that if it's going to collect any dust, then it's going to get stuck on the inside uh, of the radi radiator between the fan and, and the radiator. So 
there might be a bit a bit more maintenance but um where this is going is quite clean so hopefully dust shouldn't be a problem too much and it's going to be nowhere near the floor so best place to keep your pc is off the floor if you don't want any dust getting in it which i've just done to mine if you follow me on twitter you will have uh, seen some pictures of me actually kind of redoing my desk because it just gets so dusty and it wasn't on the floor it was like i don't know that far off the floor but it still got really dusty anyway let's mount these fans um it comes with a looks like a controller i guess that's a fan controller plugs into a sata cable uh i didn't want to have to put an extra power supply in there i'm going to see if i can do it without this i've got a feeling on this motherboard we can actually set the bios to make it so that these are cpu fans um and then we can plug these, I think they're PWM, uh, yes, PWM headers. So we should be able to plug these straight into the motherboard and have the motherboard control the fan speed on both the fans. Uh, so I don't have to use this, this controller. I don't, there's no RGB on this, so I don't think it's RGB. I think it's literally just fan speed or something like that. It's a bit weird, I'm not sure. Um, but we're going to try and not use that if we can help it, because otherwise, it means I've got to put another power lead in there, which I didn't really want to do. So let's just try and, try and do it without. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Let's get the fans on so we can get this thing in. There you go. You can kind of feel it go in a little bit. I like to give a little little twist with the hand. And then uh, I'm going to do these. Actually, no, we use the electric one. Do these up a bit quicker. Uh, so what we've done there is uh, taken the, this is the back, and I just need to unscrew this to help us route the uh, tube through for the water cooler. And then that should just drop down like that. One thing I have to remember is what screws go where. It looks like they're all the same, so it should be fairly easy to figure that out. All right, so we've got this strut off. We've got the uh, silver kind of bracket thing there basically this we've taken that off and hopefully that gives us access to mount the tubes so um, I think the next thing is I'm just gonna try and fit this in and then we'll get it all plugged in the fan cables I'm gonna take around the back of the case so they come round and plug in hopefully up top up there I think they're they look like fan headers at the top uh, we'll kind of cable it, cable tidy it all after hopefully Hopefully, 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 hopefully it works. Now, should I take it in from the other side as I've got more access to that side, do you think? It might be easier. That kind of makes more sense, actually. So here we go. Bend that over, bend that over like that, or I think that's gonna work. I'm gonna pop that over there a minute, just to rest there. Uh, so it's kind of, yeah, so that's it. That's it mounted right, That's that lines up with the holes on the front so I can mount that. God, that is tight. And I can still get under there to plug the, you can see that I can still get under there. There's plenty of room to plug the 12 volt uh, motherboard connector back in into that socket, which is just under there. It's a bit dark, you can't really see it, but trust me, it's there. So I think I'm gonna screw this on just to hold it in place. There we go, you can see a bit better now. So basically I'm just gonna line this up, screw it on. All right, that's the cooler the radiator mounted anyway so uh so now we can um figure out how we're gonna mount the cooler on and bend these cables hopefully i can get that through that gap there tell you what let's just get the mounting bracket on i think that's the next step so here in the manual 
it tells us that we actually need to uh, remove, uh, what, what's this for, AM4, so AM4 it says we need to remove the original brackets, uh, for some reason it shows that, uh, I don't, do we have that? Why does it show that? I'm assuming that's just a generic picture because that looks more like an Intel one, a really old socket 478 type. AMD, yeah, so it looks like these, these ones here are the ones we need and we basically replace uh, the original brackets on the motherboard, these ones here, with these metal ones, from what I can tell. They will kind of go like that on there. So let's get them off. So on these uh, kind of standoffs or whatever they're called, yeah, I call them standoffs. One side is thicker than the other side, that's the side we screw into. And this side here goes over the existing back plate, which is already on the board. See if we unscrew that top one, it's going to come out. So that kind of will sit over the top. It's a bit dark, but that will sit over the top. And then we screw the mounting bracket onto that. They look really long. Honestly, they look really long. We'll see how it goes. So we pop those over the top of that. We put the bracket with this kind of bit facing towards the CPU. Uh, God. Butterfingers. And I'm assuming that just goes there like that. So let's get the screws. Just hold it in place. Ah. Oh God, this is going terribly wrong. Right, I've got that one screwed in just a little bit. See, this is the stuff you, you don't see when people build computers. They speed through this stuff and then you never see how it's done and see how tricky it can be. Well, it's not mega tricky, it's just a little bit awkward. But we like to show you the actual, like most of the build process so that you can pick up from it and uh, you can learn yourself when you build your own PC. Loosely tighten those up because I've got a feeling I'm going to have to just move it slightly to line them, to line these up enough. Interesting. See what happens there as well. And the last screw. Just finger tight, finger turn it just to get it to grip so that you know when you pull it, it doesn't come off when you're trying to screw the screw in itself. And then yeah, just. See it kind of moving around, and then hopefully we can oh, we can tighten it up properly in a minute. Okay, now we've just got to figure out how to get this cooler and the tubes in best we can. Uh, I think before I do that, I'm going to plug the fans in because I said I was going to plug them into the top. So cable management in this case is going to be interesting. And um, what we're just gonna have to do is just gonna be a case of finding somewhere to cable tidy, to cable tie with cable ties. Uh, you'll see in a minute, but we'll just kind of group them together and just, you know, plastic cable ties. That's, that's what we're gonna have to do. That's the best way uh, we can kind of get around this. And yeah, we don't have a choice. There's so, there's a lot of space, but there's also not a lot of space, if you know what I mean. Right, I think what I'm gonna do now is actually to help support this motherboard, I'm gonna put the bracket back on and then we'll start plugging in connections and stuff. And then finally, we'll be able to get the graphics card in. And then we're pretty much there. We're actually pretty much nearly there. Looks a bit of a mess right now, but honestly, we're pretty close. Now you can't see this, but I'm just wondering how I'm gonna cable manage some of the cables on this side. Um, so these, these ones here, because I can't really I mean, I can, bend, I can bend them, but I'm worried that the connections are going to come out, and I don't really want that. This one's really thick. I mean, I could bend it up a little bit and cable tie them together. But then I've got this, this little bit at the top here that I've got to deal with. Um, I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave it there for now. I'm going to put this over the top of the cables, like that, and hope for the best. I think that's the way we're going to do this. I'm sure whichever way it turns out, it's going to look awesome. All right, so you can see the kind of issue we've got here. I mean, I can probably bend it round that way maybe and just kind of tidy those together. Tie those together like that. 
not going to look pretty. But to be honest with you, you're not really going to see it with the side panels on. That might work. It's not going to look pretty. It's not going to be an epic, like, cable tidy job. I'll tell you that now. Uh, but it's going to be functional, and that's the main thing. So we've got the AIO pump plugged in. That's fine. And the two fans for the radiator are going to plug in. These are going to be PWM controlled. These are four, four pin PWM fans. And we're going to hopefully be able to sign both of these to the CPU. I'm pretty sure we can do that. If you can't do it in the BIOS, we'll be able to do it in, in the software, the Asus software. Cool, I think that's good. Right, so that's the fans plugged in. Uh, what am I missing? Oh, RGB connection. Let's get that one plugged in as well, because that's also at the top, although there is one, is there one down the bottom? No, I think they're all at the top. So two RGB headers on this, 112 volt, I think, by the looks of it, and a um, five volt RGB header. And if you don't know which is which, make sure you check your motherboard manual because you do not want to plug the wrong one into the wrong one. I'm really excited to get this thing powered up and run some tests on it and actually try a game on it. Really excited. I kind of want to get this done and out of the way just so I can have a little play on it and test the thermals out. And we'll, we'll show you the charts for those uh, later on in the video. So we're going to plug it in. Oh, the wrong way, that way. So I'm going to have to poke that through. Bend it round. These bend really easily, so there's not a problem with these cables. And my fingers are probably in the way, but trust me, it's going in. All right, there we go. So that's the RGB, the fan, the pump, and uh, yeah, the other fan for the front as well. So and then we've got the the follow, the follow, <laughs> the follow, follow through. No, that's something completely different. Uh, the pass through for RGB, which we won't need in this case. So, so I think we're nearly there. I can cable tie these together just to tidy them up a bit and stop them from moving uh, yeah I might just do that and then we can get the side panel on that's pretty much everything on this side done oh apart from the power I need to plug the power in or oh, this thing's not going to turn on so <laughs> let's do that shall we so I'm glad you're here because you're reminding me about these things I'm going to forget otherwise thank you so this one goes in in here. Yeah. Don't ask me what that noise was. A little tiny click, hopefully you've heard that. And then the second connector there. And a little tiny click and that's our power plugged in. And we've still got plenty of, look how much room we've got down the bottom there. And don't forget, this is a full size ATX power supply and 240 rad in the front there is a lot of room oh sorry there is a lot of room down here uh you can actually i forgot to mention earlier you can mount ssds even though this is all in here underneath the power supply so if you do have ssds i think you can fit more than more than one that's for sure you can fit two underneath the power supply inside the case you have to do that before you plug all this stuff in because obviously now we can't get to it so uh, you can actually have two full-size SSDs or two and a half inch SSDs in the bottom, which is just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And then plug them into the uh, SAC connectors on the board there. It's a really well thought out case. I actually want one now. Honestly, I do. I would give up my, my midi-sized tower case for a smaller case. I think I might. I think I actually might. You have to consider what you would lose going down though from that size. So in mine, I've got obviously the graphics card in there. What else have I got in there? I've got um, an NVMe controller card. I've got two, two, uh, two NVMe drives uh, in RAID 0, I think. RAID something, I can't remember. Anyway, they're, they're, they're connected in to one drive, so it's one terabyte, but I'm actually gonna be replacing those for one single SSD. Um, because honestly, there's no improvements. I've had no speed improvements doing it that way. Um, so there's just no need. It's just wearing two drives, two drives, two NVMe drives out at the same time for no reason. So I'm gonna use those for something else. Um, so effectively, yeah, I could actually downsize and go to a case this size. Now you've gotta be, obviously you've gotta be careful when you're trying to route cables in that 
none of your cables are going to touch the fans. That's something I've got to check in a minute. That one spins freely, although it is rubbing on it. I might have to do something with that. With the um, with one of those cables. We'll, we'll see what we can do in a minute. Uh, but yeah, this one is definitely going to be a bit tight. I'm just trying to think how I can do this without it touching the fans. Or should I take it up? It's all part of the fun of planning this out though. So it won't go that way. Or could I take it up this side and then round? I'm gonna take it up this side, along the side of the fan. Okay, there's a hole there so I can cable tie, tie it to these. Uh, and then, I think that's gonna work. I think that will work. I think that's gonna look best as well. So we'll pull it up the other way. Kind of looks like a snake. We'll do it that way. Uh, we'll plug that in. Yeah, that's going to work. And then I'll just bend that in and tie, tie it to this. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I think you'll agree that the Meshlicious case and this build that we've just done that you've just seen in the montage there looks absolutely amazing. I'm really impressed with how this came out. A couple of little bits we need to do on cable management, but we'll do that off camera before it goes to the customer. Uh, so let's talk about some other things that we've discovered when we were building into this case. So first we're going to talk about the build quality of the Meshlicious case. Overall, the build quality is very, very good. It's a very, very high quality case. The side panels line up perfectly. They couldn't be more perfect and they are extremely easy to remove from the chassis. With no screws to gain access, you just pull them off and you're there. Internal quality is on par with its mesh side panels. With no sharp edges, its internal layout can easily be modified to accommodate a four slot GPU with a small adjustment to the motherboard tray. Uh, just a quick side note here, if you're upgrading your two or three slot GPU in the Meshlicious case and you want to upgrade to a four slot GPU, uh, be warned, you may have to completely tear down the entire system to move the motherboard tray back 
uh, and get yourself an SFX power supply as well because uh, if you've got a full size ATX power supply in this, you're not going to be able to fit a four slot GPU in as well. You can't have both a four slot GPU and a full size ATX power supply. It's just not designed that way. So you will have to remember to get a smaller SFX power supply. However, that being said, its internal layout is clean and very well thought out and surprisingly easy to work with. Just make sure to go back and watch how we routed some of the fan and power cables and save yourself a headache. So what's it actually like to build in? Well, it's actually extremely easy to build in. As mentioned already, it's very versatile and can accommodate up to a four slot GPU, but only with an SFX power supply. But it will support a full size ATX if you want to save on cost and it also supports two two and a half inch SSDs in ATX configuration. The GPU can be fitted in either its default vertical configuration with a DP and HDMI ports facing the bottom of the chassis, meaning you will need to use the supplied right angled HDMI cable or purchase a right angled DP cable if that's your display cable preference, or a GPU in horizontal configuration giving you the ability with the supplied hard drive bracket to install four more two and a half inch SSDs. Okay, so moving on to thermal testing now. We did apply a basic overclock using the Dual Intelligent Processor 5 software, and it managed to apply a 21% overclock on all cores, giving us a stable 4.6 gigahertz on the 5800X with the Be Quiet cooler. So with that in mind, we used ADA64 stress test feature for these tests, and uh, you'll see them on the screen now, running with an ambient room temperature of 24.5 Celsius for just over an hour. With all side panels on, our max CPU package temperature hovered around 80 Celsius, with our chipset temp increasing to 65 Celsius over the hour. The RTX 3070 increased to 68 Celsius, while the motherboard temp stayed at a more reasonable 47. The Be Quiet Silent Wings 3 fans appear to max out at around 1890 RPM, while the built-in VRM fan hovered between 7300 and 8000 RPM. Notably, I couldn't hear any noise from that fan whatsoever, so it's a really, really quiet fan. Over the hour we tested, power usage for the GPU stayed around 200 watts, while our CPU appeared stable and happy to run around 112 watts. As we mentioned at the start of this section of our video, the CPU clocks remained stable at 4.62 gigahertz for the entire test. So a little side note here about the thermal testing. I chose not to do the thermal test that we've just done using ADA64 with the side panels off because that's not really a normal user configuration. So it, it's kind of pointless. Although it would be maybe interesting to see it without the side panels on, uh, we didn't do that for this test because as I've just said, that's uh, not how the case is designed. And finally, before we end the video, I couldn't close it out without showing you a little bit of real world gameplay. So here on the screen now, just to show some real world gaming performance, we have Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. We have the graphics set to Ultra, and this was captured at 2560 by 1440. And as you can see, we have a stable 50 FPS, dropping down to around 45 as we move into the city. All right, so overall, I'm really impressed with the mesh lists from SUPD, although I think it is a little bit on the expensive side, coming in at around 150 UK pounds. I think that's about $185 uh, if you're in America. Uh, but it is an extremely versatile case if you're looking to migrate into a smaller form factor. Anyways, my name's Paul and I'll see you in the next video.